to what you, you spoke last game about how they were able to speed you guys up. Did it feel similar to that tonight in the way they were able to kind of force turnovers and generate some threes and, and transition? Yeah, their activity level has, has gone up the last two games, and uh, that's what you have to expect um, in a competitive playoff series. Um, and then we were playing in a crowd quite a bit, uh, you know, which there can be some good things, you know, from that. Uh, if, if we uh, read the game, read the coverages, and and make the appropriate plays, uh, but you have to give them credit for their activity. And um, you know, they jammed us up, you know, several times uh, in the paint, um, you know, with quick hands, you know, strip downs, you know, things of that nature. Um, we have to shore that up. You know, that's two games in a row uh, of that. Um, we do have to be aggressive uh, and then make the uh, appropriate plays with uh, appropriate spacing. With two chances still to close out the series, but with two losses by 30 total points, mentally, are you concerned about where this team is? Can you just tell us sort of in the locker room, no. where is this team? Who cares about mood? <laughs> like, we have a gnarly group. So I, I think so much of that is overrated. Uh, it, it's a competitive series. Uh, you always expect, uh, you know, things to be uh, challenging in, in, in the conference finals. Uh, and, uh, you know, one game doesn't lead to the next game. Based on all the experience that we've had, it, it, it doesn't matter in the playoffs. It doesn't matter if you lose by whatever. Um, you know, we beat them by whatever in game three. It, it just doesn't matter. Uh, it's about, um, you know, collectively uh, preparing and, and putting together, you know, a great game. We'll play uh, much better uh, on Saturday. Um, and that's all we just have to focus on right now. Spo, we're, we're so used to seeing Jimmy play at such a high level in the postseason. From what you saw tonight, why do you think he struggled to find his rhythm? Uh, our offense was disjointed uh, a little bit. We weren't able to uh, initiate our offense, get the ball where we needed it to go in spots where you could operate. If we, if we can get Jimmy uh, in his comfort zones and strength zones more consistently, he'll be just fine. And uh, we'll work on that. Uh, you know, the next 48 hours, um, you know, but collectively we do have to play with more intention uh, and force uh, and poise uh, offensively, um, which we're fully capable of doing. Um, with the, the way they're jamming you up, you said offensively, does that require quicker decisions a little bit? Yeah, I think, um, you know, in the second half we had some more decisiveness, you know, and with our with – our, uh, uh, on the catch, on the dribble, things uh, like that, and uh, you know when teams step up their pressure, that's what you have to you have to be. You have to make quicker decisions and be decisive with your actions. Uh, um, now that this is the expectation uh, of of how they're playing um, with that type of activity, uh, it's our turn now to respond to that. Uh, and a lot of times that decisiveness and and spacing and making the right play. Um, you know, can can lead to open shots. I know Vince, Vincent's key to your three point volume, but are you happy with the number of threes you've you've got up today? I didn't even see. Uh, I assume it's a low number. You know, at their 30. yeah, and they shot whatever they shot. Um, look, as as long as we're getting intentional with our offense and we're playing how we want to play, uh, we've proven that we can win. You know, with whatever number of three-point attempts, um, I, I don't think we got to our strength zones enough tonight. So sometimes that'll lead to paint attacks, rim attacks, free throws. Sometimes it'll lead to threes, but it's more the intention uh, of how we're executing our offense. Eric, you obviously went to Highsmith in the second half, um, mixed up a couple things. With the way the Celtics have played the last two, do you have to consider a, a more permanent lineup change for this series? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, we'll see who's available, see if Gabe's available. <laughs> like, uh, I, I can't answer that right now. Uh, you know, but it's always good, you know, when a guy comes in and, and plays some productive minutes uh, and see so, some good things happen. Um, but we'll see. How, how is it? How is the, the way they cover Bam, defend Bam, evolved over the series? And how has that maybe changed the way he has to get his yeah, shots? Yeah, that's born out of respect, right? You know, he, he was um, aggressive and able to get to the rim and able to, to get to his spots. Uh, and so they've now make, made him operate in a crowd. Uh, 
that's a good thing. You know, that's what uh, great players usually uh, uh, command is, you know, a second defender. Um, but I thought his decisiveness on a couple plays uh, in the second half were, were key, and he just needs to get, get into, you know, the rhythm of, of how they're defending him. And, um, and I'll we'll see if we can get him in, in places where he can feel more comfortable uh, uh, to be able to get to his spots. And um, we all have to, you know, make sure that, um, you know, our two main guys are, are playing in their in their strength zones. Uh, and that's on all of us. That's on me. Um, and that's on there, everybody executing with intention. This last one. Yeah, Coach, um, just following up uh, sort of what John was talking about. Um, with Gabe out, um, yeah, I know Jimmy missed the second game against New York, but you guys had such a rhythm in the toughness that he gives you. Is that something? I know you, you're the last one to make excuses, but was no, that something? No, there's no that, excuses. Yeah. No, not, not at all. But the Celtics outplayed us uh, tonight. Yeah, that, that would be a, a disservice to how uh, they took control of this game. Okay, thank you. Thank you.